Welcome to today's quick nugget on the most important features of a common network switch. My name is Jacob Hess, your instructor and mentor, and let's go ahead and dive in here and discuss switches. So first off, I need to preface with a little bit of information. I'll describe these icons we're looking at here on the screen, but I also want to preface with there's many different features on switches, so many that we can never go through them in one short presentation here. Switches are very robust, and depending on the switch you buy, it may support a certain set of features or it may not. So it's very important to go find out what those features are that the switch supports and make sure that it can do everything that you need it to do. Some switches even support things like routing. Literally, some switches can be routers. We're not gonna discuss those type of switches. Those are layer three switches. We're not gonna discuss those here. What we're talking about is more of your closet switch or the switch where your, your clients plug into. Those are called access layer switches or layer two switches. Those are the kind of switches we're talking about here. We'll discuss the most important features you should be concerned with, with those types of switches. All right, so what about those icons I was mentioning? Well, we have the one on the top right there. That is a logical representation of a common internet switch. You'll see the same exact type of icon used to represent switches all over the place in diagram, topology maps. You've probably already seen it before if you've researched any type of network diagram or topology online. So that represents a common layer two switch for us. Another way we can represent switches is by using a physical representation, like you see down here in the bottom half of the screen. We actually have a switch there where you can see the front bezel, you see all the ports, you see what it physically looks like. So in the world of networking in IT, we'll use these different kinds of diagrams or different kinds of icons rather to show our devices. They could be more physical, like the one you see at the bottom, or they could be more logical, like the one you see there at the top, top right. So getting that out of the way, making sure you understand that before we dive in here. So let's go ahead and talk about what a switch actually provides us with. A switch provides us with wired network access for our devices. So for our PCs, our laptops, our phones, our wireless access points, our printers, our servers, all of these things will plug into the network and they have to get into the network somehow. So what is the device that they plug into? Well, that device is called a switch. So the device, the switch, provides our nodes, our network nodes, our clients with wired access into the network. So they plug in with a cable, like a Cat5 cable or Cat6 cable uh, to access the ethernet network. And that brings us into the next topic. There are different kinds of switches out there, but the most common switch you're gonna find and the most well-known widely used, well, if you actually just go out anywhere and buy a switch, it's gonna be an ethernet switch most likely. Ethernet is what we use to connect our users into the network. So our ethernet switches provide us with LAN access. Like I said, there are other types of switches, such as a fiber channel switch for storage area networks, but we're not talking about those. We're just talking about our common ethernet switch here. So what are some of the technologies that are the most important to look out for in the world of Ethernet switches? Well, the first one, guys, is going to be if that switch is unmanaged or managed. It's important that we have a managed switch if we want to be able to access that switch remotely or even locally to change its configuration. An unmanaged switch does not allow us to make any changes to it. It doesn't even allow us to monitor it really. So an unmanaged switch is not something you're gonna be looking for for an enterprise or a business grade network. For a network like that, you're always gonna want a managed switch. So that's an important feature. All right, so once you have a managed switch, well, then you get access to different sets of features. So then you need to start looking at if your switches can provide some of the more advanced things like VLANs and quality of service. Well, some people might be saying, well, VLANs aren't that advanced. Well, they are very important on switches. If you have an unmanaged switch, it's gonna be flat, not gonna have multiple VLANs. But in the case of a managed switch, they should all support VLANs for the most part. And VLANs is something that you're gonna need for your enterprise grade equipment. So make sure that your switches support VLANs. And then also quality of service or QoS. In this diagram here, you can see we have our different types of clients connected to the network. And one of those is a voice over IP phone. Now, in the world of networking, uh, really all traffic is best effort until you implement something like quality of service. So what in the heck does that do? Well, our phone calls, they need to have, uh, well, the traffic, we need to make sure that that traffic has priority over all other traffic. Why? Because when we're on the phone, if there's any type of interruption in the traffic, the callers are gonna notice it, right? One person's voice maybe get choppy. 
or one person may start dropping out of the call. You may have had that problem on your cell phone. You may have been talking to someone and all of a sudden the voice gets groggy or, or choppy or maybe the call drops completely. So that those type of problems can be caused by a lack of quality of service. So if we want to have voice over IP phones on our network, then we need to make sure that we have a switch that supports quality of service. Most of our higher end switches are gonna support that. Well, all high end switches do. But most of our enterprise grade or business grade switches are gonna support both of these things, VLANs and quality of service. Make sure that you read that on the list of features if you need that. All right, guys. So the next one is actually gonna be something that it sounds pretty common, and of course it is. But the number one thing that our switches provide us with is a set of ports that our, our, our hosts can plug into. So the number of ports that that switch has is one of the most important features to recognize. In this case, we have a common 24 port switch. It also has some uplink ports there on the right, which we'll talk about in a second. But the main ports that connect the hosts into it, or the clients that they plug into, though that's 24 ports there. And our switches will come in varieties of 8 port, 12 port, 24 port, and 48 port. Those are the most common varieties of switches. Uh, there are others you may find out there. Usually if you buy the little four port switches, usually those are unmanaged switches. But anything 8, 12, 24, 48, those come in the managed switch varieties. So those are the common number of ports you're gonna see. Now, why is that important? Well, if you have a, a switch you need to install into a closet that is gonna support 40 computers, well, you need to make sure that it has enough ports on the switch. So if you just have a 24 port switch, is that going to support 40 computers? No, so you have to buy another switch or you just need to get a 48 port switch. So that's an important feature to look out for. Make sure you're buying a switch that has the correct number of ports for your network. Next most common uh, important feature would be speed or bandwidth of your ports. So if you're going to need your host to connect in to common gigabit ethernet connectivity, then you're gonna to wanna to make sure you buy a switch that supports gigabit ethernet on all of its ports. You can still find switches out there that only support fast ethernet on their ports. So you could accidentally buy a switch that only let you do 100 megabit per second instead of that gigabit you needed on the ports that connect to your end users. So that is a super important feature of our common ethernet switch. Next super important feature is power over ethernet. So again, referencing that voice over IP phone down there, well, they have two different ways they can get power. One of those ways is by plugging it into the wall with a power brick, getting your power from a power outlet on the wall. The second way we can get power to our voice over IP phones is through something called Power Over Ethernet, or P-O-E for short. Power Over Ethernet is a, is a technology that can be built into our switches that will allow us to power that phone through the cable that it connects to, or through the cable that the phone has that connects into the switch, provides the power through that cable, through the network cable. So that is Power Over Ethernet, guys. Now there are other types of devices that do uh, support PoE as well. And that will be things like your wireless access points. Your wireless access points can plug into the switch and get their power from the switch over the cable, just like phones do. So if you need to support wireless access points and a bunch of IP phones with your switch, make sure that it can do power over ethernet. All right, also known as 802.3AF. So let's move on to a next important feature we have on our common switches, and that is our uplink ports. The reason why this is listed here is because on our switches, some of them, they may not have uplink ports. And what the heck is an uplink port? So on our, on our switch here, where you can actually see the physical representation of it, all the way on the right side there, you see this group of ports that is kind of standing, sitting there on its own. Those are the uplink ports. Now our uplink ports will support various things. Uh, some of the enterprise grade switches will support an SFP or some type of transceiver that allows us to plug in a fiber optic cable. So if we need to be able to plug in to a fiber optic cable to connect our switch to the rest of the network, then we need to make sure that switch has an uplink port that supports that. It's the next important feature you need to make sure that you look out for. All right, so your uplink ports, they'll support many different types of connections, mostly copper and fiber, so it's something big to look out for. And also the bandwidth and speed of your uplink port. They can come in many different varieties, supporting up to you know 40 gig and, some, and even higher these days in the newer switches. But point is, you need to make sure you look out for the uplink port and make sure it supports everything you need to do with the switch. And the last most important technology I want to convey to you guys is switch stacking. 
So what in the heck is switch stacking? Well, it's a technology that allows us to put multiple switches together in a stack and connect the backplanes of those switches together. Meaning we interconnect all the switches in such a way that they're directly connected to the backplane and is basically making them one big switch. They act as one switch. You can even manage them all as one switch. So whenever you set up stacking, what does it look like? Well, it just looks like a stack of switches. Now this could be any stack of switches, right? You can even have a rack that has four switches installed in it. Does that mean that they're stacked? No, it doesn't. They have to be connected on their back planes to truly be stacked. So it's an important feature to look out for if you wanna do stacking. You need to make sure you're buying a switch that supports stacking as a technology. All right, super important because there's a lot of com closets where we're going to need to install many switches and it's helpful if we can stack them together like that. And guys, those are the most important features for our common ethernet switch. And I do want to just reiterate that there's so many more features out there on switches to look out for. But as an access layer switch that's gonna be connecting our hosts into the network or our clients, these are some of the most important features to look out for. And that wraps up today's quick nugget on the most important features of a common network switch. If you found this video useful, please like and subscribe. My name is Jacob Hess, your instructor and mentor. And as always, have a great one everyone, and I'll see you in the next video.